Hey, MHU, 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 Hi everybody, it's Stuart Jolly along with head football coach Tim Clifton. Exciting week on the road for Morris Hill. Uh, wow, what a win. I think we'll travel down and watch you guys play Saturday afternoon. Tim, uh, that's one of the most impressive performances I've seen by, by your team in quite a while at Catawba because you and I know, we talked about it last week, it is such a tough place to play year in and year out. Yeah, it is a hard place to play. And, and what happens to you is, um, the ride is in between whether you stay overnight or whether you go that morning. And uh, we, you know, we've always, we've always traveled that day. Uh, one year we did stay overnight years ago, but uh, even Coach Walker, when I was talking to him and, uh, before the game, he said, did y'all come overnight? I said, no, we traveled this morning. You know, I, I think we loaded the bus about 7.15, you know, in, in the morning and uh, when they pre-game you know, uh, after that, but uh, it, it's, it's a hard place to play because uh, of the travel and then getting there and, and uh, getting them up, getting them moving, don't let them, don't let them find a place to, to lay their head because they sleep all the way. Yeah. We've even gone, you know, um, maybe halfway, pulled over to a rest stop, got out and walked, made a walk, do a walk through the rest, uh, rest stop before we stopped at high schools and and did it at high schools. We went to Salisbury High a few years ago, but this time we tried to figure out how to get in there just a little bit later, but still get everything done and give our guys a little bit more time to, to rest uh, overnight. And I think it uh, it worked out for us again. Uh, it worked out for us in the second quarter. In the first quarter, I thought we were a little bit like a day's going in the first quarter, but uh, the second quarter we woke up. Yeah, and, the, and if you're a Catawba fan, you wish you guys would just roll back over because, my goodness, did you ever wake up and, and for the whole game, a 500 yard set of offense, uh, four or five or fourth down attempts. Uh, and we talked about it so many times this season control, having the ball, just have good quality time of possession. Looking back, about 36 minutes. Uh, that's you know you figure that's uh, good things come out of that quite often and they certainly did on Saturday. Yeah, you know as a coach you um, you, you love to hold the football and I thought um, in the, in the fourth quarter we were able to uh, to run at them and continue to run and, and control the clock and and uh, anytime as a, as a coach you just you, you I enjoy now I, you know. I love the excitement of catching it and making people miss and, and all that. But if you can take the football and just control it. Um, in fact, the first, uh, first drive um, in the second quarter, at the end of the second quarter, um, we, ran, we ran 15 plays and, uh, and, and then got in. And that's what you want because your defense needs to rest. You know, you're trying to keep you anytime you can keep the defense off the field and let them rest, uh, they're going to play better and they're they going to play with more energy. And I thought, um, you know, I thought our, our defense in the first half, I, I thought, uh, played really hard. And, and, uh, and then in the fourth quarter, I thought we played really, uh, really hard and started doing some things and making some plays. And then we got the pick from from Carl running in for a touchdown, and we got a punt return, and uh, then we got a, a long touchdown, and then we got another long touchdown. We were like, there was a point in there where we put 21 points on the board, and we run two plays yeah. early in the, you know, in, in the second quarter. I think is is when it happened, but uh, it can do that. I mean, things can they can they can spiral out of control real fast, and uh, and they made a couple runs at you. Yeah, they really did. They they didn't, they didn't lay down. Right. They, they scored right before the end of the half, and uh, then we came out and got one, and then they came back and got, them, got one. And, um, they wasn't a deal where, you know, it was just, well, they they, they, they you know, lay down and not try to score and just finish the game. Uh, they did make a couple of runs at us, and our kids just kept pounding away and, uh, and doing some things we needed to do, and I thought uh, we did a great job of, of playing the run. Uh, really 
good job playing the run. Quick recap, uh, second quarter, as you said, first quarter was kind of like, okay, you got the game late, first quarter was the one to miss. Right. Because it really you took off from there. Um, we ended up uh, trailing 7-0 um, in the first quarter, Lions tie the contest, Rucker punches it in for one yard out. A minute later, he said, boom, boom, boom. Uh, Rucker on point return, we are up 14-7. to 7-0, uh, 6 uh, left in the uh, quarter. Johnson has a 56 yard uh, grab, he punches it in, so it's 21 7. And then uh, to close things out, uh, we're able to uh, just keep adding to that and adding to that. So uh, going in at halftime, it's 35 14. And you and I have talked about it. When you've got kind of that spread of points, it's important what you do that when you come out very quickly in that. Second half play because you know, 40, you know, they're down to 21, but man, that doesn't take long that it's a 28 35 ball game. That's right, it, and uh, you know, it's, it's like we talked about last week uh, uh, 14 points is, is not always what you want because one score now is a seven point game. But uh, what we try to do is uh, Saturday was uh, do a better job at halftime. We have made good halftime adjustments, uh, but uh, uh, the challenge was to focus, uh, focus in uh, at halftime and and do a better job of, of uh, coming out in the second half and performing early in the second half. So we we tried to make sure we really did a good job of focusing at halftime. And uh, I thought I thought the guys did a great job of. Uh, of listening to the adjustments we wanted to make. I thought they did a good job of, of tuning in to what we had to do. And, uh, you know, because what happens to you if you don't watch it, you come out and you're all lackadaisical. You know, uh, that's, uh, we you had to say, hey, we're up 21 yeah. points and we'll just kind of coast. Yeah, we didn't want the the same thing happen to happen to us against the so we came out and next thing you know, we were in a dog fight. And, uh, what we were trying to really do is, and then you always try to fix things, you know, um, uh, contrary to what people believe, you are trying to always fix things, and, and I think halftime was a deal where we were trying to make sure we did a better job uh, as players, uh, as our players focusing in. Yeah, you, you talk about adjustments, and we've touched on this briefly before, and you, know, you watch all the different network views of games, they talk about coaching adjustments halftime. Is that a matter of you go back and just review the you know, your, your top points of, okay guys, we knew coming in we need to do this, this, and this, but we still got this part of the list to complete. How does that really work? Well, I think what you do is you, 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 you're going to come up, come together, offense, defense, coaches get together, you know, defense staff, offense staff. They'll, they'll review some things that, they, that uh, we need to do better or some adjustments we need to make uh, uh, based off of what they're doing offensively and some things we hadn't seen that they might have got us with that we need to make some adjustments to make sure we cover them. Uh, offensively, you might tweak a route to here um, and then you, you let them know these are a couple of things we want to get done now. We, we want to make sure we get them done. And uh, as, as you do that, you know, you might, uh, uh, the most important thing is making sure everybody get, and knows the assignments that we're going to take care of. And I always will, um, I always listen to, you know, some players as I go through. I'll, you know, sometimes you'll ask them, well, you know, what do you think? What do you got here? What do you got here? Uh, and then some of them will just volunteer it. You know, <laughs> they, they'll just volunteer, you know. I don't, you know, I think we can block this guy, or I think, um, and I, you know, I won't be honest, I've had uh, players in the past that, that you'd say, didn't you block that guy, and he said, I need help. I've had him, I'd rather him say that than say, no, nah, I got him. I got him. Yeah. And you <laughs> You're like, like hey, but you had him. Well, I'm like, and, and, right. and, uh, and the same thing on, on defense, you know, you're just trying to find some things that, that you can sure up. That you that you didn't do as well as you as you wanted to do, and then 
Uh, and then that each team comes out and they have something different. They're going to show you so you got to make sure you get that covered. Okay, that makes good sense. Offensively, we said 501 yards total offense from Mars Hill. Uh, Craig Rucker, talk about that briefly, tying school record for most career touchdown receptions. Hauled in two on the day. Dimitri Holmes, uh, 39 career receptions. They're tied. And hopefully everybody stays healthy. We'll see that record go away. Let's talk a little bit about Craig. He's already gotten recognition from the South Atlantic Conference this off this week as the AstroTurf Player of the Week. Um, they key him on every time he's out of the field. Well, let's just be honest. They start keying on him when he gets off the bus. Like, watch that guy. Watch that guy. Um, but you've been able with the broad base of talent you have, other positions that able to free him up to do really good things. And when he's been, uh, for lack of a better terminology, uh, tied up or, or kept from doing what, he, what his assignments are, you've got the talent that's been able to fill in and done quite well this year. Um, is that one of those things that from a coach expectation standpoint that it is a matter of, okay, we've got this game in the books, now we're coming up against Carson Inman, we've got to go back in and see, well, Catawba had this as an answer for him here, and this is an answer for him here. Well, watch Carson Inman's tendencies, and then you work around those. How does that work? Well, um, he draws a lot of attention. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, and I, I, thought, uh, I thought Jimmy did some Really, from the second quarter on, I thought Jimmy played extremely well at quarterback and, and got uh, got the ball to different guys. And there are some some guys that can make plays. I mean, we were seeing seventy three yard strike there in the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's um, what happens is if you get running, if 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 and, and why they one of the key plays. I mean, Jet ran the ball out right the Goffins flying blocked well, uh, um, but. We threw a swing pass to, to Chris Roberts on our boundary, and he ran over the corner. And when he ran over that corner, our whole sideline changed. Everything changed, the momentum, the excitement. Um, and then, then uh, you know, he, everybody tries to find a way to, to get, to get uh, Rucker covered, and uh, I think uh, the, the pump return got him going. The first one got him going a little bit, then the second one got him going, and uh, uh, and then you know the part of the tournament was really you know, impressive. I mean, it was an impressive run, but uh, the pass where he caught it in the middle of the field and then made a miss was was uh, was really a, a phenomenal play. A classic record. Yeah, it really but, was. But you know you you got to cover all those guys out there. Yeah. They're all. Yeah, you know, Ferguson, Harbison, and, and Gilbert, and, 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 and Cowher, those guys have got the skills out there. And with Jed and Chris in there and, and, and running the ball inside, it, it sort of squeezes that defense down. And, uh, the it main, gives you better flexibility. Yeah, you know, anytime you can run it, you can pick where you want to throw it. It's when you can't run it that you've got to figure out all the other. Um, and as a coach, you'd much rather be able to choose when you want to throw the football than when you have to throw the football. And I think that's what our uh, I think that's what our defense did to them. I think our defense took the run away from them and forced them to come one and catch them. And did a great job all afternoon. Nigel Bowden, uh, seven sacks. Uh, Carl Robert Joe uh, getting in defensive, then re returning a 67 yard. Uh, Pick for a, a touchdown. Other folks offensively, Elijah Jett, we mentioned him, uh, 128 yards, one touchdown on the ground, and uh, 7.1 yards per carry, which is impressive for that young man. Chris Roberts, one touchdown of the day, rushing 64 yards on 14 carries, and Gilbert Johnson, uh, one catch, lone catch on the day. 56 yard touchdown. You're going to have one. Hey, you know, get a 56 yard touchdown yeah. reception. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, uh, I think uh, Craig had over 300 yards uh, total, you know, uh, in the game. And Jimmy uh, had 294 through the air. Yeah, uh, and, uh, but you know, if, 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 if they'll all understand that uh, 
if you don't care who gets the credit, and you let that thing play itself out, um, uh, each one of them will have something, you know, to, to be excited about. And, uh, the only guys that don't, uh, you know, the D line and the O line, they, they just, they're the ones in the trenches plugging at it and, and going at it. All the other guys get the, get all the frills, you know. And, but now DBs, I mean, it's tough on those, on those DBs because everybody sees them if something happens. But I thought Cam did a great job of taking uh, uh, pass away. They caught it and he just took it from him. You know, Cam Rice. And I thought that was um, uh, a turning point also for us that uh, he just took it away from him. Yeah. Well, and for uh, homecoming for Catawba, then we probably won't get an invite back for another homecoming after uh, that performance. Mountain Lions win 55 28 at Catawba. I think I figured that out. That was one of the third time we won down there this century. We yeah, it's, it's hard. a tough place, really it's is. Hard. And I had to go away. I, I got stuck about 1995 looking back and go to get some more because I don't remember last time we put 55 points on there. Well, I, I don't know that uh, any, I'm not sure you can find many people to put 55 points on them at Catala. And they're, having, they're in one of those seasons that we've had before. We yeah. just like, okay, we've got our starters. Oh, well, now we got those folks hurt. We'll move these people up. And you run out of people to move up. Yeah, and they, they've had their injury uh, issues just like we've had ours this year. We've had to overcome a lot of injuries and um, they, they got caught in a stretch there uh, where they had some injuries and played some. I mean, you can't find a time to rest in this conference. No, not the South Atlantic. You just can't find it. And, and it's uh, every week is. It's going to be a battle, and, and every week you got to play like it's the last game you're going to play. And, uh, but uh, I got a, uh, a call from a former coach at uh, Catawba, and he said, well, it's the last time you see anybody get 55 yeah. points on the board. And, and I don't, I'm We're not still sure. leaving. We'll have that for next show. Yeah. Probably. I'll try to dig that up. No, no, I just know that it was. Um, but some things went our way real fast. You know, when you get a pump return, an interception, a big touchdown pass, you know, it just, uh, and you take one away from them. And, um, it just, it, momentum is the craziest thing in football. It is, it is. If you got excitement, enthusiasm, and you get momentum, it, it's on, it don't matter who's playing. Makes for a fun afternoon. As long as you don't know the As long as you're on that 55 points, <laughs> right. absolutely. We're going to come back and share some of our Mountain Lion family with you. Have two nice gentlemen off the side here, and we'll be back to talk with them and more Mars Hill football right after this. Mars Hill University, helping you move your mountain. Mars Hill University gives me plenty of degrees to choose from. At MHU, I get the attention I deserve. MHU keeps me close to home. And there's tons to do in the mountains. Over 60 courses of study, small class settings, a breathtaking campus. These are just a few examples of how MHU can help you start moving your mountain. Visit us today at mhu.edu. Mars Hill University, education that moves mountains. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our special feature, Lion Coaches Show. Each week, we take an opportunity and are blessed to share with you some of our Lion family. And uh, we have uh, two great guys joining us here this week, as we do each and every week. And we'll just kind of say, I went right to left last week. I'll go left to walk right here. Tell everybody who you are and where you're from, my good friend. My name is Boris Lewis, and I'm from Apocalypse, Florida. All right. Boris, we have? Uh, Seth Brown. I'm from Rudolph, South Carolina. All right. So two Southern guys joining us here. Uh, and we do, like we, we, we do all season long, we've got offense and defense. So here we are, gentlemen. We are into the thick of things in the South Atlantic Conference season. And um, we've still got some big games, uh, big games to go. Uh, both of you are sophomores. Yes, sir. And uh, so you, you've, you've seen this deal for a year here, how it works in the South Atlantic. Um, what are the feelings this year in terms of um, where we are positionally in the league and, and just how it feels overall in terms of competitive nature? It has to feel good we, winning 
uh, on the road in Catawba. Um, but we talked with us a little bit about, you know, this, this is kind of like your line of work on Saturdays is to go out, you know, your office is out there. It's this big green office space. Um, tell us about mindsets of that, how, how we, we work through that each and every, uh, whether it's a home game or away. What, what's the mental prep process for that? Um, I mean, you know, just going out every day, giving your best at practice. Um, you know, you got to focus up. Uh, like you said, it's the South Atlantic Conference. Uh, there is no off week, no easy week. Um, every game's going to be a fight. Every game's going to be tough. You just you really got to know that and then like prepare during the week, get your reps in, make sure you know what you're doing, and just get ready to go every Saturday. Now, Boris, you're on, you're on the defense, so a little bit different mindset in terms of, of, of prepping in terms for a game, but how does it look from your standpoint? What's that process you go through to like, okay, I am, I'm zeroed in on this, we got to do this. this Basically, week. just pick up, piggyback off what Seth said and start in practice. So it comes to practice, you gotta be focused up. Then it comes with, okay, knowing my assignments. Then you gotta be, that's on the defense side of the ball, you gotta be aggressive. So you gotta wanna make plays, you gotta have 11 hats to the ball. So in practice, it start there, everybody running to the ball, everybody knowing their assignments. Then it just, once you get it in practice, transfer it to the game. Now, let's get back to the game against Catala. Pretty good afternoon, both offensively and and defense. Are there uh, personal highlights for you? Uh, I got one sack and I got a few. I was hoping you'd go make sack because I have heard just like a crazy man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got, you got, you got it high. Everybody got high, especially after it came like right after the pick six with Carl had. So once I seen him got the pick six, I just I was talking to him like, okay, now it's my time to make a play. And then the next drive just came and made a sack. And then defense just was blowing up from there. And then offensively, does it, and Tim and I talked about it uh, in our, our segment, you get that momentum, it can swing back and forth in a game, and, and that's certainly big game-changing momentum, or it just adds to the excitement that was already there. Then when it comes over, you know, defense has done this, how does that spill over? How does that make a good, positive difference for the offense? Uh, I mean, it just gives us that breathing room, you know, we're not out there, you know, say we just scored, say we're up 21-7 like we were, defense just got to stop, you know, it just gives us another opportunity to go out there and just increase the score, you know, give us more room, and um, I don't know, it's just awesome, it's an awesome thing, like especially when uh, defense is making their big plays, doing their thing, we see a big man out there getting tackles, and then just it hypes off his lineup definitely because we go against each other every day in practice, and I mean, that's what we're working for, so. It's just awesome. It does make a difference. Um, this season, and we've talked uh, a lot about difference this facility has made. You guys being sophomores uh, really see that contrast because you recruited, you come into this campus last year, you were in the bottom portion of, of Chambers. And then to have this great facility well, I've asked this all season long, it's interesting different takes folks have on. How big a difference has this made to, for this team and for you personally? Oh, it's been a huge difference. I mean, not just for us, I mean, I know for the future uh, athletes we got, they'll be coming here to the school recruiting wise, they should do major things. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's a whole lot better than being over there. <laughs> the locker room, I mean, just all the room we got, showers. TV, all the lounge and everything we got, it's just awesome. I think it's made a really big difference. For no, it's somewhere you want to be when it's not game day. Yes, yeah. yes, that's for sure. First is, <laughs> oh, dead, no, we were going to see you on Saturday. It definitely gave us a place to you know, come in, hang out as a team, and really develop, and you know, grow close as a family. So it's a really good thing, I think. What about you, Gordon? Yeah, it made it, it's like a big difference, especially like good AC over here. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's always <laughs> nice to be comfortable in here. Yeah, it just, it's just like our locker room is not like just like locker room. It's like a place we can chill out. Everybody can go chill. We got a TV in locker room. We probably somebody want to play the game. We can come down and play the game. Mm -hmm. It just like keep the team together, get that team chemistry built, get like greater the team chemistry. And just I feel like this facility just brought the team together. Sophomore, 
year this year for both you guys. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, let's back up junior, senior year of high school. What's your story of how you end up here at Marshall? So me, my junior year of high school, I ain't have, I wasn't, I wasn't getting looked at, but I just kept playing. I just told myself, hey, if it's gonna happen, it's just gonna come. So I never let no offers or nothing that, and I had offers get to me. So I just kept playing and came around senior year. Towards the end, that's when Coach Barnett, the defensive coordinator, started recruiting me. And he came to my highlight game. Then that's when we got my contest, and then we started communicating from there. Very good. What about your, your story? Uh, I'm actually kind of the same way. You know, junior year, didn't have no looks, no offers, never talked to any coaches. And then senior year came around. Um, I had a couple. A couple coaches talked to me. I think I talked to one other coach, and it was a coach from Newberry. And then, uh, but I went there, what for me, came up here, really connected with everybody, I felt, you know, it just feels the place for me, so, you know, I love Very here. good. We talk about the, the family <coughs> aspect of, of this program and, and with this coaching staff. Um, we've got that component, but as folks on the other side of this camera, maybe there's some high school students out there or, uh, you know, folks want to, you know, junior college and looking to come on in and play at senior college level. Um, what are those things besides that family atmosphere that you would say, hey, you really need to look about this at Mars Hill because this makes this place special? Um, well, like I said, family atmosphere, but on past that, uh, the school, it's a great school. I mean, you know, great academics and really, I don't know why, it's the biggest thing is just the people. The people here really draws you in. And I mean, everybody knows everybody, and it's, it's just a great place to be. You just want to stay here for sure, right? You come. What about you, boys? Basically, like myself said, the people is a, it's not really that big of a school, so mostly everybody knows everybody. is like, you can sometimes feel like, okay, I'm not going to talk to this person because I feel like, oh, I'm probably not going to fit in. But you never know until you talk. Like, everybody, you can do, okay, hey, how you doing? Then you might just have a conversation, okay, now you got a new friend. It's never like, I never like had a moment with somebody just, no, I want to talk to you. Like everybody is just like good people, communication. You just got like, sometimes you just got to step out of your comfort zone, like to talk to somebody if you want to make new friends, you know. But it's like a nice, how can I say it, a very nice community. Very good. We're talking about, you mentioned community. Um, good segue into this. Uh, hometown, how, how big is your hometown? Basically, like the same side. Okay, I was wondering transition yeah. wise, and yeah. it's about that. Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing for yeah. you with Blue Golf. Blue Golf. We got two stoplights. Yeah, well, we're right there with you. <laughs> three if you kept the one down the four lights. <laughs> so, all right, so that's not been a, that big of a transition. I know we've had some guys in here from Orlando and or Miami, whatever. And like, eh, we're a little other than traffic in I 26, which they can relate to. <laughs> that's a huge difference, but for you guys, it sounds like not only um, a, a good fit in terms of program, but uh, kind of a comfort zone for you from, from what you came from, which tells me that you you both were probably pretty happy in your hometowns too. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't looking like, ah, I just got to get on another planet. Because you know, some folks like that don't appreciate that. Yeah, a small town atmosphere, it has a few rubs to it sometimes, but by and large, yeah, it's a good opportunity to uh, you say you get to know people. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, looking remaining portion of the season, uh, personal uh, goals for both of you guys. Uh, we still got uh, plenty of games left, uh, but you, let's do it this way. Seth will have had a successful season if Boris will have had a successful season if. I'll let you go first. Um, I'll say. Probably just. Thank you, I see. I know I'm hanging you out there with this one. I'm not going to keep you to it. We're not going to come back to the tape and like, eh, well, you didn't do this. Probably like, I just got to keep giving them all. Sometimes I know that I tend, like, when I get tired, but I still I know how it's a little something in me. I'll probably take the playoffs just so I can probably get somewhere. I just got to be consistent, just keep going at it. So not taking plays off. And, 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 and I will tell you this, enjoy that at this age because as you get to my age, well, it's like, eh, the wells don't have 
a whole lot to pull from on that, so <laughs> enjoy that now. What about you? Uh, for me, to be a successful season, um, really it just comes down to the team for me. Uh, like the senior boys on the offensive line, we got two seniors. I really like to send them out, you know, like we went out the rest of the season, maybe make a playoff appearance, something like that. Just give them something to be proud of. I, I really make it a successful season for me. We've talked about uh, the team aspect, and one of the things that I've, I've seen this year, uh, it, it does seem everybody's really, it, it, it's always athletics, it's like puzzle piece, but we, we've been able to put the puzzle pieces together and kind of cement them to the board this time, which is, which is great for everybody. In the remaining two years, you guys got a lot of personal puzzle pieces to be working on in terms of, you know, athletically, in terms of academically. Uh, tell me a little bit about things academically. Well, what are you majoring in and, and where you see yourself that you know, if it plays out the way I want it to play out, then this should happen. Uh, academically, um, I'm a business major right now. Okay. So, um, in two years when I get out of school, I really like to be working for a company, you know, like uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi Type, maybe in the HR department, human resources, but, um, you know, you never know what life has to offer sometimes, so I just got to keep my options open, keep working hard, and what's supposed to happen will happen for me. Well, and that people aspect that you have as a team mate carries over, in particular the HR, mm -hmm. HR world. Yes, sir. What about you, boys? So, me, I'm a um, physical education coaching major. Okay. And, like, I haven't thought so far ahead at the college. I'm just focused on the presence right now. I'm just letting, I'm just following God's path for me, so I'm just walking the path. That's a good one to be on. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he'll continue to bless both of you guys. I know it's uh, it's fun to be in the stands and watch you guys play. It's uh, fun to interact with you here on campus. And uh, yeah, I mean, when you are in the defensive role that you're in, the offensive role that you're in, sometimes you're not the ones that are going to get the you know, top credit in, in the various articles. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things that if you guys aren't there, ain't nobody getting any top credit for anything because it's just not going to happen. Yes, sir. So, but we're glad to, glad to have you here, part of the Marshall family. Mm -hmm. We still got a couple of years to go. Hope we can have you back on and, and see how things are going. We wish you the best you. and for the rest of the season and the rest of the semester. Sure. We'll be back with more Lion football right after this. It's Javon Harvison, receiver, and you're watching Lion Sports Network. Welcome back to the Lion Coaches Show. Glad you were with us as we got to uh, share part of our Mountain Lion family with you. And well, it doesn't get any easier than the South Atlantic Conference. Bring you up to date. The league standing UVA wise is 0 and 6. Catawba zero and five, Limestone one and four, Tuscombs two and three, Newberry's three and three, Carson Newman three and two, Mars Hill four and one, Wingate five and zero, oh. Lenore Ryan six and zero. Oh. Talked about Carson Newman, uh, Mike Turner season number three over there. Uh, pretty good chance they'll come in here running the figure. Yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> that'd be a good. Uh, you take that it. bet. Every day. Every day. Um, I think it's been since about the early 70s yes. since they've been running. And they, um, we, a few years ago, we checked and uh, searched as much as we could uh, in the offseason one time. And uh, there's like two uh, college teams that run a split back there. Uh, and, uh, and as long as Mike Durden shut the headset, that's what the Eagles are running. Really running and it's work. work. Yeah, and Ken Sparks ran it when he was there as a, as a player and a coach. And, and Mike, uh, you know, um, as a player and a coach. So um, they're so efficient at it that they have an answer for everything you, you do. I mean, it's just amazing uh, the answers they have. And it used to be they came out of the huddle so you could do some things. But now they line up like everybody else. And, and they stand there and they, they see what you're in. and then. Uh, they they gonna check it and uh, uh, they got a senior quarterback that's been a four year starter. And anytime they have a guy that's been a four year starter running that offense, they're real good at it. Uh, which one of the 
just catch them early in the year when they got a freshman quarterback. That's right. That's what you want to do. But, um, you know, when a guy's been there four years running that offense and, and some of those running backs are, uh, are upperclassmen, they add a transfer or a receiver. I mean, they, they have a chance to, um, to, to put a lot of points on the board against anybody they play. And, um, you have to play assignment football. You have to you have to forget who's got the ball. You know you, you got to tackle all of them. You got to tackle them. The dive back quarterback pitch. You got to tackle all of them. Uh, well, as the and the losses they've had, uh, 38-28 loss at Wingate, uh, and a 36-23 uh, loss at Lenore Run. Uh, so the two losses they've had, uh, the top the league teams. Uh, but I do still see that they are, uh, you look at the regional rankings, uh, LR, Super Region 2, they're number two, Wingett's number four, and Carson Newman's number six. As you guys said, it doesn't get any easier this league. None at all. None at all. No, and uh, I think they lost to uh, the other school. Uh, they lost to, uh, I think, West, West Florida is who they lost to. And uh, West Florida is... Um, uh, now they've come on strong, so um, they've had three big games um, that they played, and uh, they've been in uh, all three of them. And yeah, I can see where they're they're still ranked in, in, in the region. Well, and uh, it, though year in and year out, that's been uh, one of the the marquee programs in in the league. Uh, well funded, great facilities. Uh, but uh, facility-wise, we're matching up with them on that aspect. I know your guys will be ready to play, uh, hoping that... Well, let me ask this. You had a big 55-point win on the road at a very, very tough place to play at Catala. Uh, only the third win down there this, this decade, well, 2000. How difficult is it for a team to make that transition and maintain that focus of we won big on the road, but we got to come back here and here we are playing the number six team in the region. Is it is it super tough, or is one of those things? By this time of year, there's less of those emotional swings. Well, you know, I, I think the, the big thing is um, we're fixing to play a team. That um, is, is, is at this point in time better than, than the team we played last week, there's no doubt. Uh, we're fixing to play a team without a couple of fumbles, we uh, could be very easily undefeated. Uh, they had a couple of turnovers and a couple of fumbles uh, in, in, in some games. And uh, I think um, at this point in time, um, they, they, they might be the best football team we've seen, uh, you know, at this point in time. I think, uh, um, you know, in Division II, LR, you know, but outside of LR, um, this is the best football team we've seen. I think they... Uh, and you mentioned real quick, Tim, that West Florida game, they won that one 20 to 13. Oh, they did. And that, that's, that's, that's not. That's, that's, that makes even worse. Yeah, no, it does. Oh, I'm going to reject that because yeah, I mean, they that, did win. Yeah. And, and uh, that's the reason where they are. West yes, Florida's, that's the West Florida's that. real good. Yeah. You know, um, and what you look at it, you know, is uh, you gotta you gotta look at and coaches say it all, all the time, but they 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 truly uh, coaches truly mean it. Sometimes players don't mean it, they might say it, but you only have one task at hand. And what we've done in the past don't, don't matter. And the only task we have at hand is, is Carson Newman. And, um, you know, you, you try, uh, as a coach, you just, uh, uh, I don't know if it's superstition or what it is, but um, I never look at the, the opponent. I never peek, I never look a week before. Uh, I thought um, Catawba was a gotcha game that they can get you, and um, but I, but you never look um, you never look uh, ahead and uh, uh, you know you, you just try to instill in them that they have one 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 task and that has to get ready to play play Newman and um, Newman's one of our 
premier football programs in the country in Division II. Uh, Ken Sparks had more Division II wins than anybody in the history of Division II. Um, and, and, um, and Mike Turner is just, um, he's just doing what, uh, what Ken did. And, and uh, they were together forever. And um, uh, they built that program over the years. And, uh, but, it, but if you, 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 they have trouble finding games to, to play. People, uh, <laughs> people in Division Two, right. they're not. They're like, no, no, no. They're running from them uh, because they've had so much success that uh, every year, you know, you can now Michael say, "Hey, has anybody called you about games?" You know, we're looking for. They're always looking for games because um, when you have that kind of program, people aren't. Uh, they're not knocking on your door to play. So. Uh, but you know we we've got a, a big challenge ahead of us. Um, uh, I think I think our players um, will be excited about the challenge. I know we are as coaches, and um, uh, you know uh, yesterday uh, I know we had a good meeting and with the, with the players and and went over some things. And um, today's their day off, um, and uh, you know the coaches are in the last night late. I'll be in the trying to uh, get a handle on this and, and uh, man I'm just excited that we're where we at uh, and that, that we have the opportunity we have because you want every game in the end of October and November to mean something. If they mean something late in the year then some things are going right for you. Well and for those of you that uh, come out here in the stands and cheer on the mountain lions it is a one o'clock. We're back to our favorite one o'clock kickoff yes. here in uh, Mirror Stadium, We're filling the hill all year long. So continuing that, come out and see some great football, and we'll be back next week. Till then, so long for now. Hey, Mitch, you want three? One, two, three. Hey, Mitch, you.